Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Wonderful. I sing the body atomic. Gender ambiguified, gender non-elected, gender amplified, gender pre-selected, transgender and gender stuck. Not all of us get struck with the luck to be holy boy, singularly girl from the start. Blessedness is etchedness amidst the layer of wretchedness of our existential hearts. Masculine and feminine prayers get answered in all the sun-dusted shadows of every replaceable part. In the beginning, we all began living when everything swelled in supernova womb. Stardust glittered, blistered, and littered the sky in overwhelming cosmic boom. Adam and Eve slunk from the garden, not understanding the weight of their shame. So God hung redemption in a mirror for reflection on the gate with a note signed by name. I am who am. Believing in God is not the issue. Believing God matters is. For someone who lives in the din of modernity, in the din of modernity, for someone who lives with a heart that gives blood to a sanctified life, holy ground looks like all other ground until we listen up and look around to hear God speaking Sophia, Sophia, Sophia on the wind that spins from the culture we inhale daily, understanding the riddle is to embrace without failing that I am is in the middle, no male or femaleing, neither one nor the other, encompassing father and mother, sex parts a land for gender entwined, body perfected to steady the mind. From the second we lower our defenses, the Holy Spirit enters and centers our senses back on our vocation as God-bearers. Divine action cares not, but for a willing heart to do its part and takes no account of any other faculties. God would never shackle these manifestations of spirit down. And when the shepherd of 99 found his one lost sheep, he brought her home, enfolded her, and never mended the fence. So run away, find your soul-tending timber. Light sequoias with matches and burn spiritually limber in the tension between floral O'Keefe and art rendered dysphalic by permanent leaf. Establish yourself in transgender grace, ongoing celebration of God's perfect face. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, thank you. Colorado Springs has been a wonderful welcome. Uh, the literary community has been very opening and engaging. This is called Menace Manifesto. Maidens, mothers, crones, dear sisters, all. It is time to intentionally embody a holistic type of feminism, one that doesn't overlook patches of disenfranchised experience. It is time to consciously act out, to grind our axes upon arrival, to combine idealism with our cynicism. It is time to feel solidarity pumping through our very nature, into our very culture, and it is time to be a menace. <laughs> We must be feminists who know where feminism has failed us with its ignorance and its assumptions about our sisters' drug-addled, badly behaved, slightly feral, inappropriate, wild, reckless, hungry, powerful, anything but average, sometimes genderqueer, occasionally masculine lives. It is time to be the queer lavender menace of a trans woman's experience, to be the broke-ass menace of impoverished women's experience, to be the never-been-to-college menace, the drunken menace, the addicted menace, the sex worker's menace, the shove-your-dogma menace, the menace of the mentally ill, or the menace of my poverty can kick your theory's ass any day. It is time to stop scrawling new poems into our notebooks, stop reading calmly complacent in copy shops, content to be safe storytellers. Mm -hmm. We can no longer pretend we are passing through America unmolested. We must move, even fearfully, 
into the dark corners beyond our self-confidence. It is time to eschew expectations, start ball brawls, be debaucherous, time to mess up, to be messed up, to get messed up so we can crawl out of the wreckage, even if emerging with a bruised ego or a black eye, possibly wiser, if not worse for the wear. It is time to grant permission to be imperfect, to be belligerent, scream into the streets and stroke attention to our loud feminist presence. It is time to cause stunning trouble, to validate improbable ambitions. It is time to let our differences be largely cosmetic to polish and praise the chips on our shoulders and bring barrages of burrado and braggadocious sluttery to street and to stage. It is time to partially praise whatever sort of God watches over the drunk and the foolish, the feminist and the queer, those with the sheer will for ingenuity, community, and forgiveness. We must not be discouraged by the everyday vigors of a devaluing world. It is time to join a 